I'm Tiger Height, and I'm here to make WWE SmackDown and Pro Wrestling Majestic again. The thing was, the show was fine. The tribute to the troops thing, I feel like, was a distraction. I mean, I liked it, but it still felt like a distraction to SmackDown. Because they want to stay canon, but also not canon. It's hard to do that. Before I get into it, just really quick, Impact Wrestling. I'm still actively covering it, but the last three weeks... They were non-canon shows. I'm not going to cover non-canon shows. So that's why you haven't seen a lot of those Impact shows. They'll be back. But let's get into SmackDown. Because it was a good show. I liked it. A lot of the matches were fun. The, there was a lot of dynamics that were happening. And even though I had a big moan about the Tribute to the Troops stuff, there were some things I did like relating to the Tribute to the Troops. Let's go into our first match, which is one of the two. It was Santos Escobar and Dragon Lee in the United States Championship Tournament. I like the match. Don't get me wrong. It was a fun opener. But their match at Survivor Series was infinitely better. Survivor Series? Was it Survivor Series? Yeah, it was Survivor Series. Because Carlito was replaced. It was Phantom Driver for the win. Dominic Mysterio seemed a bit of a distraction. And not in a good way. It was not positive because he b gave both guys the same look... And it just was there without anything being there. Now, I get that Dragon Lee is facing Dominic for the title. But once again, Dragon Lee is the replacement for somebody who is hurt. It's kind of weird. Phantom Driver for the win. Santos is moving on. Dragon is facing Dominic tonight for the North American champion. But it was still fine. Nobody looked buried. Nobody looked weak. Thumbs up. So the Cody Rhodes segment. It just basically was tribute to the troops. Not really a whole lot after that. Uh, the drill team presentation was really, really good, though. Um, I'll give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. It really helped with the crowd, kept them really excited, and I did like the, um, the uh, drill team stuff. Bobby Lashley versus Karrion Cross. We got Karrion's full entrance. Here's what I did like about Tribute, is that the people who served in the armed forces who were competing, they did like a little blurb on their experiences in the armed forces. And Bobby Lashley, being a army sergeant in, in the past, this was fine. I liked it. It gave more history. Actually, I didn't even know Bobby Lashley's dad was in the army. So that was kind of a cool little thing there. I liked the match. Karrion looks good. I hope we see more of him. And it was a spear for the win. I liked it. Thumbs up. CM Punk segment. People were super, super jazzed about it. I liked CM Punk, that little bit of a dig at the brawl out and everything that happened with that. And he's really going to make his decision whether he's going to be on SmackDown or be on Raw or even be on NXT. <clears throat> Unlikely, but you never know. He did mention it. Next week on Raw. It was fine. I like how they're doing this stuff with CM Punk, keeping his return to in-ring action very subtle. But they're really playing it safe. And right now, CM Punk being as white hot as he is, he has to be safe. So this gets a full thumbs up from me. Charlotte Flair versus Asuka. All members of Damage Control other than Bayley were out there. They were taken out by a bunch of baby faces. These two had a fine match. Bayley came out with a distraction. But this time, it worked in Asuka's favor. It was a roll up for Asuka to win. And perfectly acceptable. Orange Cassidy, thumbs up. I like the contrast where Kyrie lost last week, but then Asuka won this week. It's showing that Bailey has inherent value. How are they going to follow up with that? Are we going to have damage control win, lose, win, lose? Because after a while, that's going to get kind of lame. Pull the trigger on Bailey being taken out from damage control. Have her lead the babyface faction because they've got to set up Royal Rumble. Bailey has to win this Royal Rumble match. I think it makes the most logical sense because there's not really anybody else that I can think of in a rivalry so close to the Royal Rumble that would make sense. Like, at all. Rey it made sense last year. This year, it has to be Bailey. You gotta start putting the rocket chip on her and have her being taken out by damage because then now you have the road to WrestleMania for Bailey's decision. From the Royal Rumble, if she wins, to WrestleMania to face Io. It makes the most sense. Also, Io's face all the other babyfaces for the title. Unless you want to do Shotzi, Bailey is the only other option. 
Oh, and before you say anything, there's nobody on Raw that would make sense to win the Royal Rumble. Just, no. It has to be Bailey. And in our main event, we have LA Knight and Randy Orton taking on the Bloodline. It was a fun main event. I liked it. Randy Orton looks great. I like the structure of the match. Nobody looked bad. And it was a RKO on Jimmy Uso for the win. I'll give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. I think it could have been done better. And it. I'm liking the little hints that they're doing here with an LA Knight Randy Orton match. WrestleMania, they have time to set that up. If LA's not going to win the Royal Rumble or Randy Orton, I think that would actually be kind of a fun match. I think the dynamics between them are good. I think it would be structured really well. And then it's a perfect match for Orton to get back into the swing of things for Mania. And that was SmackDown. Let me know you thought about not only my review, but SmackDown in the comments down below or right over here next to me. Subscribe to the channel, become a patron, follow the TikTok and all of my social medias, which will all be linked in the link tree down below or in the description. And as always, be majestic.